okay so guys in the previous session uh, we have been working on designing the user interface for ios wallet app so we have got the section 1 ready for the transactions page let me just quickly go to transactions page and we have got two sections section 1 we have got button more we have got button pay bill button top up button send section balance section menu and the section 1 background similarly we have got a section 2 also where we just have the background and we have to make a couple of more things here just a minute So now we are going to continue this section. Now what do we need in section number two? We are going to have the last transactions. Okay. So let's say we are going to define the last transactions here. Last. Okay. I need to keep it sideways. Last transactions. Okay. We'll keep the size to twenty. Twenty would be enough. Then what we'll do? We'll have another section that is a see all section. See all, and this I'm going to keep grey. <coughs> so I'll change the color to grey or something, and I'll increase the size to sixteen so as to make it a little small. Okay. Now. i'm going to arrange it accordingly so i'm going to top align it and i want to keep 40 pixels from the right okay then what next we have is we have a couple of more options like the transactions of the people those who have done the transactions okay so here what i'll do i'll just make one round here okay let's just use shift to draw it okay within this we are going to have an image so image is going to be an image view or anything like that so we can quickly see uh in case if you want to put an image we can do that so what am i going to do uh let's say i'll just quickly get the dropbox icon and i'm going to use it okay let us just make it images.google.com and i'm quickly going to get the dropbox icon dropbox icon <clears throat> this is the dropbox icon which i might be using that's a vector icon so i'll just save the image to downloads and i'm going to use it so i'll go to dropbox icon i'm i'll copy the icon and i'm going to paste it here within this okay i'm going to use shift and option key on mac uh -oh. i think we got two I'm going to arrange it here. So I wanted to fix it within this, okay? And I'm going to make it a group. So this is going to be the see all section. Then we have the last transactions, which I'm going to name it as LBL title transactions.
I can't hear you, sir. You cannot hear me. Is it fine now? Yeah, now now it's fine. Okay. So I have got both of these arranged. I kept five pixel difference between both of them. And I selected and arranged it a little wise so that oh oh like that. So and finally we are going to have a transactions value at the right hand side, which is going to be a little big. It will be of red color or green color or something like that. So this is going to be plus, and this is going to be dollar nine point nine nine. Okay, and let's say I'm going to fill the color to green or something. Okay, so we got it, and we can increase the size a little more. But in case if you want to keep a quick balance between the font, we can keep. It's same as well. So I just wanted it in front of, let's say, the user. We can do that ways also. Or else, if you want to keep it at the center of the of the content, we can keep it center also. Okay. So let's say we'll keep it center. So now I've got an icon user. I've got a Dropbox title, so I'm going to call it as title user. And this is going to be transaction date, trans date. This is going to be trans value, trans value. And I'm going to group all of these together. Group, and this group will become user transaction. Okay, and I'm going to keep it in. The section two. So in the section two, I've got a user transaction. I've got label C or label transactions and a background. So that's going to be all. And now I can have this repeatedly. So I can group them together. Okay. Or else I can also convert them in uh, Supernova Studio also. So since this is going to be a list of all the transactions happening. Okay. Finally, at the bottom. we might have a tabbed menu also so this tabbed menu we can create within supernova studio also okay so this is what i'm going to export let's say for now in order to make this ios application so i'm going to save it i have got the project saved i'm going to save it as a local document also so i'm going to go to file save as local document and i want to update it within my ios wallet app I'll go to the downloads, and I'm going to keep it in iOS Wallet app. I'm going to save it, and finally we are done. Okay, I've got it saved here, and I'm going to call it as today's date is I think 13 September, right? Thirteen sept. Save it. Also, I'm going to push everything on Git. Okay. So here I'm going to commit updated UI files, and I'm going to push this to the origin. Okay, so we got this pushed. Now, what do we have to do? Now we have to get started with designing the project for iOS. Okay, so what do we have is, as I have already told you earlier, also that we have a project known as Supernova Studio. We have a tool with which we can quickly convert the user interface designs into the layouts which is required 
in the iOS app. So we will be able to convert the layouts quickly. And then we are going to write our code for the relevant layouts. Okay. Pratik, am I audible? Yes, sir. Now, so we are going to import a sketch or XD. So since we have made our project in XD, so we are going to import the user interface designs. So we'll go to iOS wallet app and I'm going to select the design of iOS wallet app XD 13 September. I'm going to open the document. Once I open the document, I can quickly select the platform for which I want the app to be made. And I am starting to make it for iOS. Okay. There are other platforms also we can make the UI for. It could be Flutter, it could be Android, it could be React. But currently we are interested to make it for iOS. Now, once we selected iOS, we'll go to the name. Okay. And we're going to create the project as iOS wallet app supernova. I'm going to name it as supernova. Then there are design tokens, plain values. How would you like the project styles to be? So we are going to take the design tokens. Okay. Now we can select all the user interfaces or the layouts, which we have created in our XD. In case if you want to select any specific, you can do that or else you can select all the layouts, which you have designed in Adobe XD. So since we have designed the landing page and the transactions page, so I'm going to import both of the designs and then I'm going to set the constraint and convert my application to open and export. So I'll go to import. This eventually saves a lot of time for the designer to quickly make source code for the user interfaces for the application. And then we can proceed to converting or connecting the application user interfaces with the backend logic and performing the other important task of app designing the backend task. Okay. Which means connecting with the web services, connecting with databases, connecting with uh, other APIs so as to make the application work properly. Now, so this is the first page, the landing page. I would like to switch my current view to the proper view, how my application is going to look like in the, in the mobile phone. Okay. So suppose I have got a mobile phone, which looks somewhat like this. I've got my first screen, which is the landing screen. Okay. Also, I want, I want the code to be hidden and, uh, we can do one thing. So anyways, so what we can do is we can see the code as well and we can see the view of the application. So I'm going to keep the view on one side. Let's say here on one side, I have a view which shows me the first layout page, your perfect banking partner. Okay. On the right hand side, on the left hand side, you can see that we have got a user interface available. And on the right hand side, we have got the Swift code. So this is the first page landing view controller dot Swift. And there are various Swift languages available, the versions which we can select. So currently we will be coding it for Swift five. Is that clear? Yes. We'll be coding it for Swift five. Now, so what you can do is you can quickly see we got the landing page. And if you want to see the components of the landing page, we can quickly go to the component section. We want to see the assets, the images, the icons used in this project. You can quickly get those icons and, uh, you know, the images also. So currently I'm into the components and here I can quickly observe that I have two sections, section one, which is my view section two, which is my control section. So section one, you can quickly see that is already showing me markers for the constraint. Okay. Can you see these markers? These markers are very, very important when it comes to designing the application and fitting the application layout with different mobile devices, because you already know that there are multiple mobile devices available. Let's say for iOS, we have various versions, you know, we have 11 pro max, we have 11 pro device. So every device comes with a different dimension. Okay. 
different dimension as in every device might have different screen dimensions different width different height so how will you be able to make applications support all of these mobile phones so for this what we do have is we have these constraints okay is that clear so the yes. constraint means whenever your application is going to run on a mobile phone it will automatically start from the rightmost section as well as from the leftmost section and this area will be stick to the top of the application or to the mobile area okay is that clear yes that's fine with us these constraints are fine secondly i'll go to the landing background page so again the landing background page says that the background will be a few you know a few dp below the top so this is fine with me this looks pretty good to me in the original application also which is in the right hand side this view this proper view gives you that how your application is going to look in the mobile phone is that clear yes so i think this looks perfect for us but now there could be a problem which means so currently for section 1 it is fine now i am going to section 2 so section 2 is again constrained to the first section so which means as soon as section 1 ends our section 2 is going to start from the very same place so this is also fine with us right now within section 2 then we have a label landing page which will be at the center okay what you can do is this will automatically be available at the center and will be stick to the top of this particular area a few you know a few dp below the below where the section starts now so this looks also fine to me that this will start from here and will always be at the center of the screen so even if the width of the mobile phone is a little broader it will be displayed at the center if the width of the mobile phone will be smaller even then it will be displayed at the center of the screen so this is the constraint of the center which we have preserved so this means we have preserved horizontal center offset from parent when resizing uh, the layout for different devices is that clear so this constraint yes. is also fine with us because we always want it to be at the center then we have the second section which is the button start now section this also we have kept at a specific location from the top and at the center of the screen so anyhow irrespective of the device on which my application is running my control start now will always be at the center of the screen okay got it yes then we have got a label start now which will automatically be within the center from the top and center from the left and right within the button itself within the button start now itself so now you can see we have got the sections we have got the landing background we have got a section 2 we have got a label we have got a button start now and all of these components are arranged very properly the way we designed it in xt right yes now what we want is we want start now button to be an interactive button when when a user will click on start now okay there might be a few things happening which might be possible that it can switch to let's say the second layout which is going to be our uh, the transactions layout where we have to send money okay we have to receive money we have to pay the bills and all that so what i'm going to do currently this section start now is a view control by default okay so we are going to convert this view and we are going to convert it to a component okay and the component is going to be the button component we want the button start now to be treated as a button control is that clear yes so converted it into a button and now you can see this becomes clickable can you see that yes It becomes clickable. So currently, earlier this was a view, but now button start now has become a button, which means it is an interactive control. Okay. On the right hand side, you can quickly observe that this is the x and y position of the button control, 
then this is the behavior how it is going to interact with the layout size followed by we have got the behavior of the content also okay so the behavior side says that this component is going to be of button type okay and the current state is going to be the default state okay now what we can do we can put some more interactions here which means there are multiple states of the button which means there might be a state when a user is going to tap on the button there might be a state when the button is selected there might be a state when the button is disabled so what do you want in all of those states so depending on our choice we can actually configure it okay similarly when we converted it into a button control we got to see that it has a text section in it which is also known as start now you can what you can do is you can modify this content let's say later you want to um you want to change it to let's say start here something like that okay so i can press enter and you can see that the content has been modified so this is the way with which we can actually modify the views here then supernova studio also okay but i'm going to keep it the same start now is that clear <clears throat> so just yes. the programming ide we can change the text content we can change the font size or the font style if you want to use any specific font you can use it roboto is a very common font okay since the design team was maintained with roboto we are going to use it you can also change the text color also later post your design part okay then you can define the corner radius the opacity the background of the button in case if you want to put any images here you can do all that stuff okay so is that clear i believe this is clear yes uh, sir uh, mere laptop mein roboto font nahi hai so aap install kar lena roboto font okay so roboto hoga by default nahi hai maine bahut try ki thi fir uh, jo default acha lag raha tha jo match kar raha tha image ke sath fir maine wo select kar liya theek hai not not an issue okay. now ab ios integrations mein aap dekhenge to we have a property name so now our button becomes button start now button okay this is the name of the property which means this btn start now button so this is how we are going to access it within the code okay when we will be coding the button control and we want something to be done with respect to our choice so we will be interacting with this property button start now button okay okay and now there is a function defined that what action will be taken when somebody is going to click on the button this function name is going to be called and name of the function is on button start now pressed so as soon as anybody clicks on start now button this method is going to be executed and the name of the method is on btn start now pressed is that clear yes now now there are different interaction types also available here so you can see that the interaction type could be the default behaviors which means we can redirect it to a url we can open an action sheet we can show an alert we can navigate back to the previous screen we can navigate to a specific screen once the user is going to click on the start now section okay so let's say i'm going to go to the transactions section okay so as soon as somebody will click on start now where will he go he will switch to the start uh, to the transactions page is that clear yes and how are we doing it so you can see that here is a code that there is there is a function defined on button start now pressed so as soon as this button is going to be clicked there is going to be a method called which is known as perform seek and now what it will do it will redirect to a page known as push transactions okay so there is a push facility available now how this push transaction is defined that i'm going to tell you okay but i'll i'll show you step by step right from the beginning how the code gets executed in sequence okay how the user interfaces are initialized and then coming to this part on button start now pressed is that clear yes now 
So there is this function perform say what is the meaning I'm going to take you to the APIs and I'm going to show you properly how things are happening. For now, I just want to show you when once you click on start now, we will be redirected to the next section, which is going to be the transaction section. Okay. Is that cool? Yes. So we are in the landing page. As soon as the user is going to start, he's going to click on start now and he will be shifted to the transactions page, which is the let's say the default behavior of the application currently. Okay. I believe this is clear to you. Yes. Now, now what do we have here is, so now you can see we have got a login landing view controller dot Swift with a Swift language. Okay. Rest we have got a user interface and we have got some event handling being done. Okay. So Supernova Studio makes it very easy for us to design the user interfaces and get the basic behavior done quickly. Okay. But later we have to modify our code as per our choice or as per the requirements of the application. Okay. I believe this is clear. Yes. Now what next we're going to do once we get to the second screen, which is the transactions screen. Okay. So here on the transaction screen, we have a transactions view controller dot Swift. Okay. So this is the view controller, which is going to be displayed once we will reach out to this second page, which is the transactions page. I believe this is clear to you. Yes. <clears throat> we go to the components and now again, there are two sections, section one, which is your top section within section one, we've got a few more sections here, the button send, the pay bill, the button more and everything. So we have a section menu first. Uh, give me one minute. I need to take this call. Hello. So now here, what you can see is the current section, which is taken in the code here is image view. It is already converted into an image view. Okay. Now what do we need to do? We do need to convert that both of these components are different components because one is the menu. Second one is the notification. Okay. So what I need to do, I need to go here back to my XD and I need to check why I have bought into that mistake. Okay. So I'll quickly select the section menu and I can see that I have two images. One is the BTN notification. Second is the BTN menu. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to ungroup these. Okay. I have ungrouped both of the components because when both of the components were grouped, they are being taken as, you know, a common image. Okay. So I have just divided, uh, I have just ungrouped them and saved the document. Now what you can do is you can hot load again. So in this, what I'll quickly do, I'll go to file and I'm going to click on the refresh design. Okay. Refresh design. So I'll click on refresh design. I'm going to select my iOS wallet app XD 13 September. Once let's say you have modified the transactions page. So this time I'm going to only select the transactions page because the landing page was already fine and we have already done the, uh, the configurations. Okay. So I'm going to merge the latest design again which is my transactions page. I'll go to the components and now you can see that I have got both of these controls arranged properly now. Okay. The first is the button menu, which is sticked at the top and the left hand side of the screen. Second is the notification, which is sticked at the top and the right hand side of the screen. So now both of the components are different. Is that clear? And we can perform individual event handling on them. <clears throat> I believe this is clear. Yes. So now since they are two image views, we either we can quickly put an event handler on these image views also, or we can convert them into buttons. So we can quickly convert the component into button. Okay. So this becomes my BDN menu. So what I mean to say is I can click on it. This becomes a clickable control now. Okay. So this is a clickable control. We click over it, but I think we bought chota sa, you know, but chota sa, wo 
interaction are a hover effect so that's why it is not looking uh, not visible to you at the moment but the component is converted into a button control similarly i want to convert the second component into button control also okay so this also becomes my button control okay so for now what i can do is i can quickly make the function here let's say we have got a function known as on button menu press and i'll quickly uh set up an interaction like a show alert okay and within show alert what i'll do i'll show a title and a message and in the title i'll show menu button and I'm, in the message i'll show menu button is clicked okay so what i'm doing is i am actually currently modifying with the user interface but i'm getting all that code written automatically at the background here can you see that yes so here i've got this function on button menu pressed i'm going to explain you all of these swift classes and everything you know i'll i'll share i'll explain each and everything as soon as we proceed further so we've got a menu button we got a message that menu button is clicked then it is showing that the alert controller will have an alert action like option 1 then we have a uh option like cancel so we can modify the code according to our choice okay and we'll do that also so now if i go here if i click on it so now this time you can see that we have got something like menu button is clicked okay and we can cancel it so this means now this button becomes an interactive button right yes and we got the constraint also set properly attached at the top and the left hand side so this is not going to uh you know when when your layout is going to be resized or when it is going to run on a phone it will not run here and there it will be available stick to its position similarly i've got the second button also so the name of the function will be on button notification pressed so once we click on it this button is also going to be executed then what we have is we have a balance section so what i'll do is i'll go to the second section uh here okay so we got section 1 we got a section menu here okay which is an image view I want to delete it now section menu i have deleted okay so i've got two buttons and they are arranged properly then i have a section balance so section balance will be sticked at the top and at the center of the screen so this is also fine with me then i have a label balance again at the top and arranged at the center fine with me top and center this is also fine with me okay so they are not going to you know they are not going to uh run uh here and there also what i can do is sometimes when you have a content which you want to be scaled you know let's say it's going to be uh the new data is going to come in to the content and it might not go to the next line kai bari kya hota hai ki aapka na ye bahut zyada bada content aa jayega abhi jaisa 2091 usd hai but ho sakta hai ki aage 20000 uh, usd aa jaye theek hai na to in that case aapka ye jo content hai next line pe na shift ho is wajah se hum isko hamesha center aligned rakhte hain theek hai jaise jaise content badhta jayega it will eventually increase okay matlab left and right se width automatically increase ho jayega i believe this is clear yes we can also set the layout behavior sometimes like this that it is going to extend automatically uh on the left and right okay this behavior okay so what we can do it can preserve the width when resize abhi aap usko uncheck bhi kar sakte ho not a problem it will automatically take the full full width okay okay now so we got the following components done this is a section balance then we have a button send i'm going to convert it into a button again let's say this is going to be a button control so i've converted it into a button control button send then you have a button top up so i'm going to convert again this into a button this becomes button top up but now you can see that the backgrounds are running okay so what we'll do let's keep it to we can convert it into image views also okay 
So let's convert it into an image view. Image view is also not working fine as of now. So not a problem. Let us just keep it views only. We'll quickly put, uh, you know, we can quickly add uh, a function on it directly. We can automatically set an event handler. Okay. Won't be a problem. So this will be arranged at the left hand side. Then this will also be arranged at the left constraint. This will be arranged at the right constraint and this will also be arranged at the right constraint. Okay. So that's fine with us. Automatically they will be arranged at a specific places. Then we got the button menu and the button section, which we have already configured. And then we've got section two. Now within section two, we have the transactions and the see all, which is going to be like this always, but this control, the user transaction control, this is going to become a view group. We want to make it like a list view or something like that. Okay. So what we can do is you can quickly convert this component into something like, you know, uh, a collection view. Okay. Collection may have to convert capacity. You can quickly convert it into a collection view. Okay. And what is a collection view? Collection view is something like when you have a homogeneous kind of data available for the section collection means it's going to be a collection of all the users. Those who have done the transactions. Okay. So I'm going to quickly convert it into collection view and we can uh, define the collection view is going to be a vertical layout or how it should look like. Okay. What should be the top in inset? Should we shuffle the content? We have all these properties available, but for now, what do we really want is I can quickly convert it into a group. Okay. I can quickly convert this into a group. So this becomes a view and then I can convert this into the component, the collection view so that the content remains same. Okay. So now you've got a view and then you've got one collection. This is the first collection. And then we can mock the cells as in, let's say I'm going to call three. It's going to be, there should be three components. Now you can see that it automatically becomes three components in it, like a list. Okay. But why we are unable to view it at the moment properly, just because of the constraints, which are set. Okay. So what we'll do, we'll quickly go here and we'll take its constraint. Sorry. We'll take the constraint up to the bottom of the screen. Okay. Let's say like at this place and I want to set the bottom constraint. So automatically this is going to be arranged this time. Okay. So as soon as the number of components gets increased, okay, we are going to get all of these arranged properly. So this is going to be, this is going to become a scrollable kind of view here. Is that clear? Yes. Right. It will always be at the center arranged at the center. And within this, you can also see that your, where your logo is going to be. So you can keep the logo arranged at the center. Then you have got the title user arranged at a specific place. You have got the date arranged at a specific place. You've got a transactions value arranged at the right hand side. So all goes well. Okay. I believe this is clear. Yes. We need to modify the alignments a little. So since this is going to extend from right to left, I want to keep it. The text align should be at the right. Okay. So from right, it will extend to the left. Okay. Is that clear? In the yes. similar way, the, dis the date is fine from left to right. It's going to be aligned at the left. The Dropbox username is also fine aligned at the left because if the size of the username increases, so it's going to stretch up to a specific location. And then the icons are arranged appropriately at a specific place center aligned at the left. Okay. And similarly, I've got the view defined here. Okay. So it's always going to be at the center arranged from the top and the bottom of the screen. Okay. So we have got all of these controls, the button, the view. Okay. And we have got the pay bills and everything and all of these list components also. Okay. So this is the view collection. And now with the view collection, what you can do is we can actually modify the data of these view groups, depending on whatever data is coming in from the server. Okay. We can do that modifications as soon as we progress further in the course.
So now what am I going to do? I've got these two pages, okay? And I'm going to export this now. So I'll go to Supernova Studio. I'll go to the screens, I'm going to file, and I'm going to export both of these pages to an iOS project, okay? So I've got the landing page, I've got the transactions page. I'm going to convert it into a project and I'm going to call it as iOS wallet export. This is going to be the export project. Okay. This is going to be the display project name. This is going to be the export project name. Then I'm going to have a bundle identifier, which you already know is the iOS is the unique identifier of the application. So I'm going to call it as com.hackwiller.ios wallet app. Author is going to be Demanche. These are going to be the allowed devices. I want to run it on phones. The orientation is going to be portrait. Uh, I have also included the CocoaPods profile. The Swift language which we are using is Swift 5. Then we have different types of user interfaces available. The kind of user interface could be storyboard, XIB and the code base. Okay. So I'll explain you all the kind of UI available, but majorly we use the storyboards. Okay. Then we got the architecture as model view controller architectures, and we are going to export all the images which we are currently using is going to be transformed automatically to 1x, 2x and 3x. Okay, is that clear? Yes. Finally, we are going to export it and I'm going to save it in iOS wallet app. So this is going to be my export project finally exported here. So this is your project now iOS wallet app code so we got the ui design done okay now we can open it in export and start coding the other part of the code okay the project so what am i going to do i'm going to open this ios wallet app export project double click on it also i'm pushing the content on github so that updated x code code for ios wallet app so you can download the code from here app code updated so i've committed to me and i've pushed the branch so now you can also get the code downloaded from Xcode uh, from our GitHub repo, github.com, so that you can also work out on it. iOS wallet app, or I can directly go to github.com. Here I have my iOS wallet app. And in the iOS wallet app, this is the latest 22 seconds ago. I've just updated this iOS wallet Xcode. This is the project code, which you can download and start building with me. Okay. So we got all the classes, we got the controllers, we've got the landing view controller, we have got the uh, transactions view controller, then we have got the X basic export for the UI designs, and then we are going to understand each of these, how the iOS wallet app is working. Okay. So we go to export and we got the project running here. This is the iOS wallet export project currently available. Can you see that? So we got yes. the project opened in export and now we're going to get into the production app, whatever we will be building the source code part, the classes, the resources, the layouts, the interfaces and the, and everything we're going to understand. Okay. So controllers will have your, uh, you know, the source code part and interface will have your main storyboard, which means the user interface design for your project. Okay. So this is going to be the UI, which we are going to use. Okay. We have got a navigation controller. We've got a landing view controller. This is how the landing page is going to look. Then we have a transactions view controller. This is how our transactions view will look like, and we can modify all these content from here. Also, we can modify the color, the image, the size and everything. We can keep it rounded. We can modify the transactions value and everything. Okay. Can you see that? Yes. So that we will be doing it. So now, so, but we will start right from here, right from the iOS wallet app. So now 
from here we will continue in our next session where we are going to get involved with the front end designs first and then the back end design of the code that how the classes and the swift programming is being done so we are going to understand each and every api the classes the functions and everything and then we are going to implement them to understand what each and every function is doing i believe this is clear to you yes 